Welcome back to my series about some of the best adventures that can be had in North Wales. If you're joining me for the first time, to quickly get you caught up, I've spent the last week exploring the National Trust's Bodmin Gardens, laced up the hiking shoes and tackled Snowdon via the Rydthu Path, the Glidders via Devil's Kitchen, and Connect, a cracker of an easier mountain. I've explored some lesser known trails through abandoned quarries and copper mines, as well as coastal beauties on Anglesey. In today's episode, we'll be taking things a little easier, undertaking two short hikes that start in Betu's Acquired, one to Llinalsi and another to the Miner's Bridge. If during the video you find yourself enjoying it, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so that you can join me in my North Wales adventures. This morning we've come along to Betty's Coed. Apparently a lot of people mistake it for being known as Betsy Coed and I'm hoping that I've not butchered the pronunciation of it. To me it almost comes across like the capital of Snowdonia National Park because there's a train station and where the train station is there's lots of cafes, shops, restaurants and then there's also of course the bus stop that has a big double-decker bus that takes people up to the Penna Pass which is one of the main hiking trail points to get up to the top of Snowdon. Instead of using it as a base to get into the National Park we're actually here today to explore some of the local smaller trails and also hopefully we're gonna have a really really nice lunch because we've struggled so much this week to be able to get in anywhere. <laughs> that we're completing today is up to Llyn Elsie. We got this out of a dog walk buck that was left in our Airbnb cottage and we've already done a couple of other ones out of the buck and each of them have been really nice and easy. This one was saying it's two miles, a mile up and a mile back and it would take about an hour and a half to complete the round trip circuit. What we didn't realize is that for most of this trail so far, it's been a little bit like this, and it has in some places been a little bit on the muddy side. So if you are planning on coming and doing this walk, I'd probably recommend putting on some hiking shoes that you don't mind getting a little bit messy. <laughs> quite a few of the other walks that we've been doing this week this one seems to have been predominantly through woodland areas and even just driving over to I'm trying to remember how you pronounce it it's Betus Ukoid driving over to Betus Ukoid the landscape completely changed and as we started to come down just a little bit and into the valley just suddenly all of these trees sprung up out of nowhere and I feel like this part of the national park it just has a really really different feel to all of the other places that we've explored so far this week. Mm -hmm. 
We've made it now to Slin Elsie. It's a beautiful lake and whilst I want to say that it's really, really peaceful, there are a few people here. In that sense, it is quite peaceful. The numbers are very low, but the squawking of the seagulls that I'm guessing have come in from the coast because they're only just over the mountains is very, very loud. The views over the lake and then up to the actual mountains themselves are stunning too. And we've been trying to work it out and we think that that one over there that's slightly in the sunlight is probably Snowdon, but given that when we hiked up Snowdon we couldn't see anything, it's quite difficult to be able to work it out because we have no idea what we were hiking up, but definitely seems like the tallest out of the, the mountains around this lake, so that's the one that we're going to go with. That was a very short but sweet visit to Llanelsi in part because we do have a lunch reservation and we've perhaps taken a little bit longer to get up here than what we were originally anticipating. was a lovely short but sweet hike up to a beautiful lake with really nice mountain views. Whilst the start of the hike was very steep, what we've realised is that the way in which we've come back, it seems to be like the official entrance to the hike because you are greeted with this sign here. And it is true, it does let you know as you're going up that you know, you're halfway there, you're three quarters of the way there and there's like a bench going up to help people who might be struggling. The way in which we came up, we passed an outdoors clothing shop and there was a little lane going diagonally up the hill. A few doors up, there was then an MOT garage and literally running up the side of the wall of that MOT garage was a little footpath. And I did find that going up through that, it was a lot nicer than this because you had like the smell of the wild garlic, you had running streams and cute little footbridges that you're passing over and plenty of wildflowers and fun. So I would probably recommend not coming up this main part to start off with, I would recommend going up past that MOT garage and entering up to Llanalsi that way. We are now off to go and get some lunch, but I think after lunch we might do another short walk out of, and again I'm trying to remember how you pronounce this place, Betuz Ikweed. <laughs> we'll do one more short walk from Betuz Ikweed just to help walk off our lunch. Lunch was eaten at an old 16th century coaching inn. Whilst the outside looked impressive, the inside was even more so with its low wooden beamed ceilings cosy atmosphere, an old world fireplace. I enjoyed the local Manai mussels for starter, Welch lamb for the main course, and a rhubarb and ginger crumble with custard for dessert. Having eyes far bigger than my stomach, we set out for a final walk from the town centre to try and walk it off. on the 1.5 mile walk to what's known as the Miners Bridge. The book that we're following has said that it's going to take about 45 minutes to wander along to it, but it has been incredibly busy at the town side of the trail. Loads of people are out swimming in the water just because the cloud, as we've been inside eating lunch, the cloud has dissipated quite a lot, so the sun is out and it is getting a little bit on the warm side. Unfortunately, the numbers of people has also meant that there's been a lot of disregard for rules with regards to one-way systems, particularly on the boardwalk earlier. But the further away from town we're getting, the more spread out people are becoming. I think a lot of them have stopped to chill out by the river. So we're hoping the next part of this walk is going to be a little bit nicer. <laughs>
if you come here on quite a busy crowded day a bit like us please don't get put off by how busy the start of this trail is we almost turned around and went back to the car because it really didn't look like our cup of tea with the amount of crowds that there were the only reason why we persevered is because we ate far too much for lunch and we definitely need to walk it off a little bit but i'm so pleased that we've stuck at it because you go through a like little wooded area and that was just full of so many people you then have to go through a kissing gate into more of a fielded area the book said that there's supposed to be sheep in there which is why dogs should be kept on a leash i think at this time of the year the farmer knows better perhaps than to keep the sheep in the field so we didn't see any and then once we pass through the second kissing gate to exit that sheep field and we've come back into the woods we just have them completely to ourselves so don't get put off if you come to this town and you want to do this miners bridge walk just persevere through those crowds right at the start Yeah, on this trail, every now and again, you just need to come like a meter or two off of it, get yourself to look up the river, because every single, I don't know, 100, 200 meters or so that we've been going up, it's been changing. So much earlier on, it was like little rocks. As we've come a bit, bit, bit further, it's turned into boulders. And now we've got cascading little falls in more of like a gorge or a canyon. It just keeps on changing. I think that the queue of about 50,000 people to try and reach the summit of Snowdon has suddenly been overtaken on this trip and the disappointment of the trip has to be this so we were trying to make our way to what was known as the Miners Bridge and it was quite impressive because it's really really steep to get down onto the other side um, I've got photographs from the book that we were following and we've got here and there is no bridge and it's pretty obvious that something was here because they put up a temporary barrier and then on the other side you can see like the concrete slab as to where the bridge would have linked to thankfully for us we were just going to do a quick there and back that should only take about 45 minutes but two other parties have come to us and they said that they were doing this as a circular walk and now they've had to go all the way back and they're going to have to find another way to get back to where they were trying to go so what I said earlier about how if you start off the walk and it's really really busy I said don't get put off because it quietens down the further along you go maybe just get put off by the crowds because there's nothing to get to at the end <laughs> <laughs> 